is love? How do we define it? Can we even define it? Well, American psychologist Robert J. Sternberg, professor at Cornell University, has provided us an answer and it can all be captured with this triangle. So get ready to grow with J. Flo as we talk about Sternberg's triangular theory of love and all the types of love associated with it. With Sternberg's triangle, love can be broken down into three dimensions, passion, intimacy, and commitment. Passion refers to the energy that is associated with physical attraction, sexual desire, and strengthened emotions. When a relationship has passion, you'll see heightened levels of jealousy, joy, anger, and fear. Intimacy then refers to the level of closeness seen in loving relationships. Relationships with intimacy have this dimension of self-disclosure and concern, where you care about your partner and listen to them when they share. This is how trust is built. Finally, we have commitment which can be simply boiled down to whether or not we have long-term plans with our partners, such as marriage. Without commitment, a relationship can end for almost any reason. By knowing these dimensions, we can now talk about the seven types of love that vary based on which of these dimensions are met. First and foremost, we have love that contains only intimacy. This type of love is called liking, but it's better referred to as friendship. We trust and communicate with someone, but there's not that feeling of sexual desire or strengthened emotional reactions. Moreover, there's no guarantee of commitment in the long term, such as those experienced in marriages. You can think of liking as the type of love you display towards your friends. The next type of love is one where there is passion but nothing else. This type of love is called infatuation. There's lots of excitement in this type of love, but no clear signs that it's gonna go anywhere. Sternberg places the idea of love at first sight under this category because we have the emotional arousal, but there hasn't been enough time to build the intimacy and commitment typically seen in other forms of relationships. Next on our list is empty love. Love that has commitment, but nothing else. Now, this sort of love is very interesting because it can be experienced at the very end or very beginning of a relationship, depending on the culture. For instance, in our American society, empty love is typically experienced at the end of a relationship where both partners have lost feelings for each other. But in cultures that experience arranged marriages, empty love occurs at the very beginning because the couple hasn't had time to build intimacy or passion. Now, when love does contain passion and does contain intimacy, but doesn't have commitment, this is called romantic love. There's the liking dimension where you share secrets with your partner, conversing to build trust. Additionally, you have the fiery emotions experienced from infatuation, but there has been no label to lead to commitment. Now, I actually find the name romantic love to be a little confusing, so I renamed it to glass house love because I believe it better captures the idea. With glass house love, something beautiful is being built, hence the house. But because there is no commitment, this house is made of glass, easily able to be shattered and have the beauty disappear. This type of love is typically seen in the talking stage of relationships, where one way or another things begin to fizzle out, or even worse, one of them gets ghosted. That is the consequence of no commitment. Love that does contain the dimensions of intimacy and commitment, but no passion is referred to as affectionate love. This happens as the spark gets lost through time and physical attraction begins to die down, but the intimacy and commitment still leaves a very strong form of love. Then there is fatuous love, love with passion and commitment, but no intimacy. Fatuous, as defined by the dictionary, means silly and pointless, and this is exactly how Sternberg viewed this type of love. He viewed it this way because these relationships are essentially doomed from the start, as the foundation of trust and communication did not get built. This is a very rare form of love, but a good example of it is when partners meet one day and then decide to get married a couple of weeks later. Finally, we have reached the last stage of love, consummate love. This is the love that fulfills every dimension, passion, intimacy, and commitment. Some might even say that this is the ultimate form of love that everyone attempts to achieve. We tend to imagine this is what true love is. With this knowledge, you can now see that love has many dimensions which shape how it's expressed and felt. There is no one set in stone definition to it. Comment below which of the seven types of love you have experienced and any interesting takeaways you got from the video. Now you know, because of J. Flo.